Hello, our world, and welcome back to Our World Talk. Uh, we are super excited to bring another elected official to y'all this morning. Welcome, Ms. Dorothy Jacks. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. It is certainly the pleasure is all ours. Um, Dorothy, I know you've been uh, a Palm Beach County property appraiser for quite some time. Um, how long has it been that you've been in this position? Seven years I've been in the elected position. Okay. Mm -hmm. And before being in the elected position, um, I know we were just talking a little bit off camera. Um, to my next question was going to be what industries that you worked in before becoming the property appraiser. And uh, what was it that you had to say? So I have been with the office now, believe it or not, 35 years. Wow. This month, in fact. Okay. And uh, I, so I worked in all sorts of jobs in the office prior to running for the office. Okay. But uh, I started right out of college and have just worked my way up. So it's been a great career. It's changed a lot over time and I've enjoyed being part of the change. We're, to, we're certainly uh, happy that you're in the position that you're in because I know that you are a, a great friend of the realtor community. Um, we certainly work very, very well together. And uh, just like in our uh, Broward County Property Appraiser's Office with Marta Care. I know that you have uh, an open door policy and it, it's very easy for us to contact you and, and get any sort of information from you that we need, but then also be able to uh, help you from the realtor community with anything that you need um, and certainly help the homeowners as well. Um, tell us a little bit about where you're from. Sure. Well, I grew up in Jamaica, in Kingston, Jamaica. Oh, no way. In the islands. Very cool. Was born there. And uh, I moved to Puerto Rico for a couple of years when I was 12. Okay. And then I moved to Florida for high school. So I've been here a long time. I went Fantastic. to Palm Beach Gardens High School. Really? So I've been a county girl for a while and um, went to the University of Florida okay. and came back and started working. So um, I feel I feel in a, in a I'm in a great community for who I am because Absolutely. I'm just a kind of mutt like most Floridians <laughs> yeah. are. You know, I come from lots of places, but um, it's it's uh, and I love the way our 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 whole of our South Florida is like that. You know, right. just people from a lot of different places it makes it exciting. So you're an islander at heart. It's I am. It certainly <laughs> comes through with your personality. You're very very kind. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, the, the position that you hold as a property appraiser. What really goes into all the things that uh, your office and team touch? Sure. You know, we do three major things. We value all 650,000 properties in Palm Beach County for tax purposes. So we're doing appraisal, but we're doing it as mass appraisers as opposed to single property fee appraising. Right. We do that annually by Florida law, as does every county in Florida. We also administer exemptions. The primary one most people know about is the homestead exemption. But we like our exemptions. Absolutely. And we also manage the county base map. So we're the agencies that is responsible for knowing who owns what and geographically where it is, which sounds a little sort of like, what's that mean? But it's important for a lot of different reasons. The maps are used for uh, E911, when they're locating you, they're used for the flood control of people, they're used for permitting, they're used for a lot of different things. So we maintain those maps. And as ownership occurs, as as, as your members sell properties, right. the deeds are filed Those with the clerk of court that comes to us and we attach it to the property record so that you always know who owns a geographic property. So, okay. Yeah. Let's expand a little bit on uh, the flood mapping that you're talking about, because mm -hmm. that's always something that's uh, sort of a hot button item that everybody always wonders how it's done and, and mm -hmm. where that comes from. Mm -hmm. So what exactly is it that you guys do as far well, as we, the flood map? is? We concerned? provide the maps to the state who okay. then actually does the flood mapping, because of course that's also a lot to do with, you know, how high you are, how low you are right. and so forth, which isn't part of the data that we keep, right. but it's important to sort of have a sense of where are the retention areas, where okay. are the, you know, the areas where the, the, the um, canals and so forth, because I mean, all Florida is, is just one massive area of Swampy, Big old sandbar. <laughs> swampy, swampy land, right? So it, the key is getting the water away from the buildable area. So okay. yeah, the state actually manages the flood maps. We just pass them data regarding ownership and how think that's changing. I mean, think of for a minute about when a community is platted the first right. time, you know, it goes from being one enormous piece of land down to a, a bunch of little homes, mm -hmm. right? Or little lots. 
uh, you know, flooding is 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 probably the primary thing that's dealt with by whoever is platting that property. Right. Like, how do you get the water away from where you're going to build a property? So all of that is some data that we keep, but we don't manage who is in which flood zone. Right. Yeah, and you know, to, uh, like you said about platting, when you're going to go and plat that property, you're taking all this permeable land now and covering it with concrete, mm -hmm. um, uh, to concrete foundations. So now you've got to have a place for all that water to go. Exactly. And it, so, to, okay, exactly. retention ponds. Which come is into why play. you see retention ponds. I mean, you know, in a, it's kind of funny, isn't it? Because certainly people love living on water, but right. so many times they're simply living on the thing that is stopping them from being flooded. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> So um, you are uh, obviously working in uh, in a great office. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't have been there for uh, over 30 years. So I'd assume that leadership and, and culture are vital to you, vital to your team and, and your office. What What is your office culture like? Yeah, well, you know, I am really lucky to have one of the best teams in Palm Beach County. I would say one of the best teams in Florida. We have 220 employees in five offices in the county. Oh, wow. So we're actually out in the communities. And when you need to access our services, sometimes, say you're in Jupiter, you would go into our North County office, which is on PGA in the courthouse. Okay. And you would find both the exemption staff who can handle any question about exemptions or about how portability works or anything, the caps, but you also find the appraisers who actually value the North end of the county. So we position people where they can not just be close to their work, but also be close to the public who they're serving. I am a really committed public servant. I believe that we serve you first. Right. And my staff have just followed through on that and just see the real joy that I do in providing exceptional customer service to our customers who are the taxpayers. Right. And we know we do a complicated thing, but we want people to appreciate how it's done. And so we've really worked hard on how do you communicate that? You know, how do you communicate this complicated subject? And these days, it's not just about talking to people. It's also about emailing. It's also about providing really good websites, you right. know, that we can let people use. And I, I will say one of, our, I, I always tell people, the first people we serve are the taxpayers of Palm Beach County, right. but so importantly are the realtors, because we know that you are in a sense uh, going to pass on a lot of good information that right. we provide, especially to people who are here for the first time. You yeah, know? we we try to be your boots on the ground and work hand in hand with the property appraisers. Absolutely, and we so appreciate that. We do a lot of outreach to real estate offices across the county. I myself do it, and so do many of my managers. They go out and we do presentations. We're always happy to do that. Okay. If any of your members are interested, just have them give our office a call. My assistant organizes all of that, and we probably do three to four a week. Oh wow! Where we're out in an office okay. and just talking about what what. Uh, benefits there are so that your members can pass that on to people that they might meet in the course of business. Right. I, th I think there's a couple common misconceptions uh, around the property appraiser's office. One of them, everybody thinks that you're out to get them, <laughs> which is totally the opposite. I mean, you're, you're out there d doing those, uh, you know, the, the mass appraisals, but you love to help the homeowners experience those uh, tax exemptions and help them with portability and, and all those things that are going to uh, help save them some money. And you, you put out the communications to let them know when it's time to file for homestead and that sort of thing, mm -hmm. um, which is really important. And the other misconception, you are not the property tax collector, <laughs> right? No, exactly. No, yeah. Yeah, totally, totally different thing. The, different office. Yep. Yeah. So actually collection is done by the tax collectors. There's a county tax collector, Ann Gannon is our tax collector. And she does that along with a lot of other duties. But yeah, we don't get involved at all in bringing the money in. Right. We just say, this is what the, the amount is going to be. Right. And that's, of course, based on two things. One, the valuation we place on the property, but then also the tax rates set by the 39 cities and the county right. and all the special districts. So it's actually the taxes are just a calculation of those rates that can go up and down. Right. Uh, times the value, which by law we have to set at market value every year in Florida. I mean, that's how the law reads. Right. And that's just that calculation is how we come up with the tax, which is then collected by the collector. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, nobody's given any money to Dorothy's office. No, no, no we don't. We don't, we don't actually 
collect any money. <laughs> right. Um, so let's talk about uh, homestead and portability because those are two very important pieces of uh, the the tax puzzle. So common questions uh, that that agents always get from homeowners is what portability is yeah. and how does it work. Yeah. So portability came along in 2009. The voters approved it in 2008. And it really was a reaction to the fact that values were going up uh, because the markets were so strong, if you right. remember, sort of between 06 and 08, before the crash. Mm -hmm. And what was happening was because of the cap, the 3% cap on homesteaded properties, people were getting locked in at their homes because if they moved even to something smaller, their taxes would go up because their cap benefit would disappear. Right. Uh, the cap law always says that once you sell your property, the cap on that property goes away. Right. So what portability did was it allowed you essentially to move that cap to another property, another homesteaded property you're buying. And the nice thing is they said anywhere in Florida. So if you're moving here from Broward, or if you're moving from here to Alachua or to the Panhandle, you can take your portability benefit with you. And what it is, is it's the difference between the market value that we've put on your property, which we adjust every year if right. the market tells us to, and the capped value, the capped value is created by the 3% cap that the homestead has put on your property. And that's our save our homes value. Exactly. And the difference between those two is your portability benefit. And you can carry it to another home you're buying in Florida and making your homestead. It's homestead to homestead. Gotcha. You can't take it to a rental property. You take it to your next house that's going to be your primary home. Right. And you have, uh, there's rules around it. You can only take up to half a million dollars, no more than that. Some people have more than that, but that's all you can carry. If you downsize, you don't get to take the full amount that you have, meaning downsize in value. So if you go down in value, say you move from a big house to a condominium, mm -hmm. you don't take the full amount of portability. You take the proportionate interest of your new value to your old. So if your new home is worth half of your old home, you only get half of your portability amount. Understood. You have a window to do it in. You can all, most people sell a home, buy a home. Right. Some people choose to have a break between those. They might rent. They might go live with their mom. They might help a help a sibling. You know, summer in Costa Rica. Exactly. So <laughs> absolutely, you only have two years to use it or lose okay. it. So that's important. If people take a break, we always tell them, give us a call and we can tell you today when you're going to need to buy your next home by right. and if you want to use your benefit. Okay. Because if you lose it, you lose it. Okay. There's no petitioning to get it back or, you know, trying to find it. It's done. It's done. Okay. So it's important. The rules around portability are complex, but it's a great benefit because it's kind of let people start moving again. Right. And a lot of people now take advantage of it. We probably get, we take about 25,000 new homesteads a year. So that's anybody, first time home buyers, people moving here from out of state. And then of course, people moving around. When they're moving around, we have about 9,000 people that have a portability benefit. Okay. So that they're able to use. So, And is that something that you have to apply for or is that something that's automatic when you close? So when you file for homestead, you file for portability. Okay. So we recommend to people as soon as you own your home, file for homestead. You can do it online. You can do it the day you close. We've allowed for all of that. Uh, but, and you can file, you can file at night. <laughs> I always right. tell people, Papa lets you file, our website lets you file for homestead in the middle of the night in your pajamas. It's 24 seven. But if you want to come in, that's fine too. You just have to have closed on your house. Right. And then at that moment, you will file for portability. We will say to you, or the website asks you, where did you live before? And if you lived anywhere in Florida, we're going to have you fill out a portability application. And we do the background. We do the checking. So if you came here from another county, we contact the other county and get the data from them. Right. Okay. So that all happens behind the scenes. But portability applies in the first year you're getting homestead on the new home and so did you live in the house important. as of january 1st then you could file for homestead for that year own and occupy on january 1st but of course like if you bought a house today mm -hmm. you could file for homestead today it would be for 2024 right because january 1st 2024 is the first january 1st you're there but you know say you bought a house back in the summer of this year you're still filing for 2024 right. 
and we're going to take all your application and your portability for 2024. And when is the deadline for applying for Homestead each year? So the deadline is March 1st, technically. That's the deadline, not March 31st, March 1st. So think end of February. January and February are the primary months to file for Homestead. However, there is an extension you can have all the way up until September. So we'll take a late file application all the way up until the end of regular petition filing, which is mid-September. Okay. Uh, so don't worry about that. Just call us and we'll help you with the deadlines. But the, the goal is to have you file by March 1st. Okay. Awesome. And for all the realtors that are listening, what a fantastic touch point to get with somebody in the beginning of the new year to remind them to file for Homestead. It's a great way to get back in contact with somebody who you just sold a house to in the last, um, you know, in the, in the, in the previous year. Great, uh, great touch point for them. To, nice little reminder. Um, are there any changes coming to filing for Homestead? Yeah, you know, nothing major coming to filing for Homestead. We are at the moment updating our website, which okay. is a big, uh, we, we, just, we just love our website. Uh, I, you probably know we affectionately call it PAPA, yeah. Property Appraiser Public Access. Realtors system. love the website too. Yes, and um, we're thrilled you guys all use it and give us a lot of great feedback on it, which helps us to redevelop it. Right. About every five years, we rewrite it, mainly for technical reasons, because we want to keep the most updated technology running the site, keep it fast and keep it efficient. Sure. But also, we take the opportunity to look at what people have asked us for. So this iteration, which you'll probably see in January or February, it'll start rolling out and you'll get okay. a you'll get a little window to use it before it's all you can use. Okay. Uh, but it, it will be more more uh, ability to download data. A lot of people okay. have asked us for, you know, I'd like to do a search and then I'd like to bring it into Excel so I can make labels or I can, you know, adjust attach the data to something else I'm doing. Okay. So there'll be a lot more of that. Okay. There'll also hopefully be better features for accessing things like address changeability, or you want to report that there is a data element that's incorrect, or or filing for homestead will be cleaned up. So there's a lot of little fixes, but generally, other than the sort of front page look and feel that will be a bit more modern, uh, all the old search features will be there. Because okay. everybody always says, don't change it. We can't have you change it. So we don't change it too much. Do you have a button on there to report the Homestead cheaters? <laughs> we do. <laughs> <laughs> we do have the ability to do that. Yeah. yeah. But you'd be surprised. We don't get the best data from the public. We get it from other sources, okay. such as uh, the water departments are, give us information when somebody comes in and a, opens a water account, say they're renting, right. the water department will actually use PAPA and see that there's a homestead on that house and then they'll let us know. Because they got a copy of a lease. Exactly. There you go. Yeah, Catch yeah, them. Yeah, it's uh, kind of kind of uh, interesting because you know people always think, well, my neighbors reported me, but actually a lot of the reporting neighbors don't have their information <laughs> correct. Right. So, and we, by the way, do not pull homesteads because a reporting neighbor tells us to. We always make sure that there's more than just some angry person. Right. You know, before we pull a homestead, we're make, very careful. Make sure about the data it. that you receive from uh, somebody is, uh, you know, the looky loo neighbor is actually um, is actually valid before you go and do something exactly, like that. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so, De Palm Beach County is uh, home to a very diverse group of residents, mm -hmm. um, but one of those larger groups is our senior population. Are there any unique exemptions that we have on the books specifically for seniors? Yes, uh, there is a low income senior exemption, which is like an additional homestead exemption. Oh, really? Not worth quite as much because it's only on certain taxing districts. The only certain taxing districts give the exemption. But if you have a client who's in that $36,000 or less income bracket over age 65, okay. Which could 36, be a lot of our senior, yes. uh, uh, senior popular social security, you know, collecting senior population. Yeah, exactly, and certainly people who may have stopped working, you know, right. then their maybe their income has adjusted substantially. Every or little even, bit helps. Them. Exactly. Then they can file for an additional senior exemption. That's 
done as part of the application process. Again, if they're coming here from another state, they just need to come in. We usually will say, are you over 65? And if your income is below, there's, there's this additional benefit. Okay. There's also some nice benefits for veterans, disabled veterans now, not just a regular veteran. My husband's a veteran, but he's not qualified. He's not disabled. But if you are a disabled veteran, you should let us know when you file because there are nice benefits for uh, disabled veterans. Okay. Yeah, there's also... Do they, do they ask that right on the application? Yes. Okay. There's so a place on the it. application, so it's pretty clear. And and a lot of people are really good about saying, you know, I'm a veteran. Are there any benefits? Because in many states, there are benefits for veterans. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, so we love it's our veterans. worth asking. We have a lot of good literature that we hand out on our counters. And I know when I speak at, and our staff speaks, we always hand them out to our to your members, okay. and uh, but we're always happy to have that. Of course, it's all on the website as well. Lots. That's the other thing about New Papa will be there's hopefully better, quicker access to some of this information about these secondary exemptions because any amount you know helps. Even there's even a benefit for widows and widowers, uh, which is a we recently my property appraisal association Marty Care and I are in yes. the same organization. We ha- got through a increase from $500 in value to $5,000 in value, which equals about $100 savings for widows and widowers. Okay. And all you need for that is a copy of the death certificate of your spouse. Okay. I, I would assume that uh, you work in tandem with the other property appraisers offices to make sure that uh, you guys are doing the best for the communities that you possibly can. Yes. And every year... Uh, we are Property Appraisers Association is in Tallahassee working with legislators on new ideas. In fact, one of them we're, we're talking about right now with the realtors is to include g- better data or access to better data about taxes, about what your taxes might be. Probably the most important thing I can say to your members is to be very careful when you tell someone who is looking at a property uh, to to pay attention to what your taxes might be because what the taxes are at the moment on a home is usually based on the current owner's Correct. homestead status and cap and is going to go away when they leave. You right. know, you might benefit from it for that first year, that prorated year, but after that, it's probably going to jump up quite significantly and that is, I'm, I'm sure you hear it as we do. It's shocking to people when they don't hear it from their realtor. Exactly. And yeah. we always recommend we have a tax calculator on PAPA. Go to the property record and put in what you're going to sell the property for, and it will give you a better estimate of what the taxes are going to be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a fantastic tool to use. We use it all the time. Um, a lot of times somebody's talking to the lender and the lender goes and pulls up the property appraiser's um, uh, site. And they will take that current tax amount, and that's what they use to base the qualification for the loan. But then year two hits, and people go, my gosh, how come I'm having to escrow now $10,000 as opposed to $3,000? Well, that person owned the property for 30 years and had it homestead the whole time. Exactly. I mean, and even worse than that, when they escrow, they're going to play catch-up for the year where they pay too little and then play pay catch-up for the future year yes. when they're going to have to pay more. And that, this is a terrible time yeah, for so hit. many owners. Yeah. Um, so to the state of Florida is still seeing massive migration patterns. So we've got people come, that are coming from the Northeast, uh, which has been that way for years and years. But now we're also starting to see people coming from the West Coast, specifically California. And uh, that was that was a uh, we've seen people coming from California. Now we've got people coming from Texas as well. But um, California was uh, was one that we hadn't really seen a lot of migration coming from. Uh, do you have any tips or selling points for realtors on how they can sell Palm Beach? How do they make Palm Beach more attractive? Well, you know, I think Palm Beach sort of sells itself in a way, doesn't it? I mean, I tell people when I travel, I live in paradise. And I mean, I truly feel that way. But the thing that about Californians is, you know, uh, even personal experience, um, California has, has beaches. California has great art. California has lovely homes. Well, for many years, we had great beaches, but maybe we didn't have as much culture. And now we really do. Not only do we have good culture here, both in the Kravis and in the opera and everything else you can think of, museums, high quality museums, but sports, I mean, we have fantastic sports now, very quick access to so much. And, but we don't have incredibly bad traffic as they do in California. And we certainly have a 
believe it or not, cheaper real estate. And, so, and a far better tax climate as Absolutely, well. a far better tax climate and the ability to buy more with what they can sell their Californian home with. Sure. And yet we still have be- a beautiful climate and lovely beaches. And, a and nice, our water is much warmer. Well, much warmer <laughs> and lo- maybe less sharks. No. Yeah, right. <laughs> But even our diversity here, you know, just that is, is, is Florida is certainly a very comfortable place if you're coming from California. Yeah, we're no longer sleeper communities. Now we've got a bustling nightlife, a fantastic culinary scene. You used to think of Florida, especially our area, Palm Beach, as being this sort of winter uh, place. Right. But now it's year round, isn't it? I mean, yeah. and, and like you said, a fantastic food scene and... Just so much going on all year long. Nobody's worried anymore about, oh, there won't be anybody there in the summer. Right. You know, they're oh, really... that's certainly not the case. No, it doesn't feel like it. No, certainly not to no, us who are here. I, I'm originally from Buffalo, New York, and uh, it took forever to get my family to uh, to move down south. They all said, oh, no, it's going to be too hot in the summertime. And uh, they just experienced their first uh, couple of years of being down here. And, you know, it, nobody feels the heat in the summer. There was such a big misconception but you go back to buffalo new york in july august beginning of september it is so hot there is no breeze and down here we've got beautiful beaches to enjoy take a dip in the pool which not a lot of people have up north um certainly a fantastic place and to live year round. we've got air conditioning down pat here. exactly <laughs> yes we certainly do um well i know that you're quite busy so we're going to uh let you get out of here but i always ask one last question of all of my guests Tell us about a little Florida gem, something that you love about living in South Florida. It could be a, a restaurant or an art gallery or just something that you absolutely loved about being being down here. Well, I'll tell you, I, one of the things I love is the Norton Art Museum. And I don't know if uh, everybody has been there recently. I've but, never heard of it. Where is it? Oh, my goodness. It's just south of Okeechobee on Dixie Highway in West Palm Beach. Okay. And it's been there a million years, but it has expanded and has a great restaurant in it. It has a fantastic Friday night program that's free to the public. There are days of the month when it's completely free to Palm Beach County residents. And the art is incredible. I always used to call it, it's like a boutique museum. They sort of have one or two of everything you know. Okay. Plus an amazing collection of other things. So if you haven't been there, the Norton Art Museum is one of my favorites. Norton Art Museum. You guys heard it right here. Uh Well, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, It's certainly been uh, a pleasure and we look forward to uh, many more years of uh, partnership with the property appraiser's office and, and with you specifically. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for listening and we'll see you right back here next week on Our World Talk.